Hey, hello and welcome back and today we are looking at unofficial memory upgrades. More precisely, we are looking at utilizing unofficial memory in a DSM-7 enabled NAS. A number of you, since DSM-7's uh, release candidate was kind of made available to the public and the near imminent release of DSM-7 for pretty much the majority of modern NAS systems outside of XS and more, have been wondering about what happens if you are currently using unofficial memory upgrades or if you're thinking of upgrading down the line will the Synology allow you will it warn you what is going to happen so a number of you asked this question I promised this video I'm sorry it took me a few extra days but what we're going to do is we're going to use my existing 920 here that unfortunately I've got populated with quite noisy hard drives uh, these are pro series 8 TBs we're going to have a look, hopefully on screen now, you should be able to see that I've got the device up and running. And as you can have a look there on the screen, the device is utilizing 8 gig of internal memory. That's the 8 gig of memory that this system has soldered in internally. We're also using DSM 7.0-41882. And that version of DSM-7 is what we're running on here. We're running with those drives I've just mentioned. We are utilizing some Pro Series drives. It's a population there. There's our disk. We'll go inside. We've got four drives in that RAID environment there. All lovely and done. All nice and healthy. All inside the system. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to shut this system down. I'm going to let shut this down. Or we're going to try and do this all in a single take. So you can see that there's been no cuts or anything. And while that shuts down... It won't take too long. We'll talk a little bit about the memory. Now, for those that aren't aware, this is Synology memory. This is their own memory modules. I've had to move the mic just over here, so I apologize if my voice isn't completely centered. I'm just trying to get it away from this. But Synology's own memory, a number of you, um, when you see official memory, you go, yep, exactly, that's what they recommend. I want to make sure I don't, you know, I want all my support, my warranty coverage. So you choose to go for the official memory. But it has to be said that official memory is quite expensive, whether that's because it's been tried and tested and developed next to NAS systems, or it's been selected for its testing purposes. And of course, it's made by third parties. But Synology have verified that to be suitable for their systems. That is why a number of you will look at it and go, I understand the reason for it, but you're not totally in love with it. And you look at brands like Kingston, like Crucial, like Time Tech, like Samsung, all of these different memory modules. So in today's video, we are using um, an 8 gig Time Tech module and a 16 gig, so outside of the supported CPU limits, Crucial memory module, both DDR4, both 2,666 megahertz. Now, <clears throat> it is worth bearing in mind when you're doing this that I'm going to give it an actually a little bit longer to spin down. Um, it's worth highlighting, remember, that you are doing something here as known as an unsupported configuration. So whether this works in DSM-7, just like my other videos, bear in mind that you are using an unsupported configuration within your Synology, which can result in then being unable to support your warranty long term and provide you the support on that configuration. But let's remove this system. So those drives, yep, they pretty much span down. So we'll remove the drives one by one. I don't have to remove all four, but just so we don't knock the system around, I thought I'd play it safe and do it that way. The first module we're going to be utilizing is that 8 gig module here. Once again, we are exceeding the recommended uh, minimums, uh, the maximums there on the system. That CPU and indeed Synology themselves do state that this system should only be utilized with up to 8 gig of memory. So that's with 4 gig um, available to be installed inside there. So let's get this inside. Installed in there. I know that's proper dull, guys, but take my word for it. The memory's in there. You can just make it out there on camera. Bear in mind, when I do boot this system up, these are enterprise class drives. They will make a bit of noise. Um, if you do fast forward about a minute, I'm not going to be offended. Uh, and while I'm doing that, when the system beeps, I'll refresh things here on the screen. And hopefully not too much of this background noise is being picked up there on the mic. But once again, I apologize if it is. So let's boot that system up. Get ready to hear those drives and those fans kick in. It's going to take about two minutes for this system to boot. And what we're going to do is, remember, we have done lots of videos where we have tested exactly how the Synology now systems take to official and unofficial memory, how they're utilized, what you can do with them, what works and what doesn't. Today's video is seeing what DSM-7 does with that upgrade. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to wait till we hear it beep and initialize. Here on the screen, I've already got it shut down. Um, again, if you do want to see me do this on a few other NAS systems, I do have a few other Synology NAS that's knocking around. But to be frank, I think what we're going to be seeing in today's test is going to be largely universal across the majority of Synology NASes that arrive with DSM-7. Um, while that boots, I will uh, wonder, for the number of you that have tested DSM-7 so far, I did ask you in the comments just to let me know what you thought of it, what you liked, what you didn't like. And now the uh, release is coming, we have heard. There's a few extra bits getting added to their C2 platform uh, for C2 recovery. There's a new password manager as well. So I do recommend checking out some of the new sites, some of the stuff that's happening with Synology C2, that kind of cloud synchronization and cloud, basically cloud access point for that cloud gateway stuff. They've really improved that recently uh, in line with the release of DSM-7. If you're going to go down that cloud kind of uh, paired backup platform, C2 is actually not looking too bad now. I know a number of us would have looked at it slightly dubiously early doors, but for the price point, it's actually not that bad. And in the next week or so, I am going to be looking at the majority of cloud platforms that are supported in Synology's hyper backup platform, along with a bunch of other brands. And I'm going to look at their cloud services, what they cost, with some vague ideas about how much you're paying per terabyte, and ultimately whether they're worth bolting onto your NAS system as a backup tier. But you've just heard the beep there. And what we'll do on my screen here, and I'm just going to refresh that there and see if it has finished. It's, okay, the system is ready. Let's double click. I know it's going to open a new tab, but who cares? Let's log into our NAS. Go into it here. And we're going to take a good look about just how this system is behaving. So once again, remember, we've installed an 8 gig memory module there, a time tech memory module. And we want to see just does this system react badly? Is it going to highlight that we're using unofficial memory? Does it even see the memory module? Something a number of us were concerned with. But as we can see, at least in the resource monitor, it is seeing that larger memory. That's the 4 gig internal memory module and the 8 gig that we've just installed. We're not going to go into extensive testing. We've already done that in other videos. And I'm aware a number of you will be keen to point out that this memory module, just because it shows 12 gig, doesn't mean it can utilize 12 gig. Completely understand that. Check out the other videos on memory upgrades where we go into a lot more detail about that. If we go into the control panel, we can take a look at the info center. Uh, we can see that it has seen 12 gig of memory inside there. There's been no negative uh, message pop up yet telling us that what we're doing is erroneous. We go into the notification center there. We can see that there's been no negative um, kind of update there on the memory module. That's you know a relatively good sign. Um, and again, this doesn't mean that the system's going to be completely stable. I'm not suggesting that. It's simply that right now I'm seeing no negative connotations um, in terms of notifications and the system shouting at me that we are using that memory module. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shut this system down and now I'm going to try out the next memory module. I'm not going to go ahead and make you sit through that. I'm just going to reboot the system and install our crucial um, um, 16 gig dual ranked module inside there. Remember all of the memory modules we're talking about today will be linked in the description uh, in a link there over on NAS compares. But for now, let's shut down this NAS and then I'm going to get that memory module installed and we'll see what happens with that inside in DSM-7. So I'm just waiting for the system to finish its boot up sequence. It's, again, it's been running for about a couple of minutes. There we are. There is our beep. So let's go ahead back into the desktop here. Let's double click and we can have a good look and see how the system is doing. Right, so let's log into it. Let's have a little look. Once again, we'll go into it here. And again, what we want to see right now is the system showing 22 gig of memory. And again, I know, I know it's not supposed to support that much. But have a look. We can open this all up here. Let's see how the system behaves. Let's get the resource monitor up there. And again, what we're waiting for is DSM-7 to basically tell us off for using that. We want to see some red text that goes you're using an unofficial module. There's our 20 gig of memory showing there, which is 16 plus 4, I should say, not 22. Terrible maths there, Andrews. Um, but again, all the way through, we can have a look at the memory there. It's recognizing it there. The utilization, we can check out in the other video. But it does look like, at least for now, the DSM-7 is not going to be shouting at you in terms of what you should or should not be doing um, with your system. But 
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have found this video helpful. Once again, if you do want to see me do this on a few other NASIs, if I see enough you know, people requesting it, I'll look at doing this on some others. But for now, I think at least tentatively in DSM-7, this does at least show that as it stands in this current version, it is not going to shout at you regarding using that unofficial memory. And the fact that it's not appeared in that stuff there at the top is also a very good sign too. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe. There's links to everything we talked about today in the description. And of course, if you want some free advice, do visit me over on the NAS Compares free advice section. A lot of you put requests and uh, inquiries in the comments, and I do try to touch on them, but I do so much in terms of the blog and videos. It's just easier and fairer if you use the free advice section so I can deal with everyone as they need it in the best possible order. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.